Home of the Bengals, man. Oh, um, shit. Here from the community on solutions. They always got solutions. Good evening. Thanks for joining us at 10. My man, G Dizzle, man. Shout out to G Dizzle, man. Um, he, he, was, he was saying that there are no solutions earlier. And I, and listen, man, um, th- these people have some solutions, man. What the fuck was he talking about, man? <laughs> somebody somebody tell G Dizzle, man, you don't know what the fuck he talking about. These people got solutions. Man. Good evening. Thanks for joining us at 10. One year ago, Cincinnati city leaders declared gun violence a public health crisis. Tonight, several community partners and residents came together to talk about this multi-pronged problem and begin the long road to stopping this type of violence. Local 12's Cassie Arsenault got to sit on, sit in on that meeting. Cassie, what was the focus for city leaders? So they want to find long-term violence prevention strategies that work and focus on the 10 neighborhoods experiencing the most shootings. <laughs> 10 neighborhoods? <laughs> I bet you all of them, 11 of them are black neighborhoods. 120%. <laughs> God, dog. With the West End over the Rhine and Avondale topping that you list. Have one that but has it's a complicated problem, Hispanic. right? Because there's so many factors at play socioeconomic discrepancies, not enough programs for youth, mental health issues, parents not always being. Paid. Not enough programs for youth. Shit. I guess. Welcome back. All the shit happens at the programs. <laughs> But it's a complicated problem, right? Because there's so many factors at play. Socioeconomic discrepancies, not enough programs for youth, mental health issues, parents not always being parents, and the distrust of the police. So here are the numbers. Over 400 shooting incidents took place in 2022. 64 of those were homicides. And the people affected most by these shootings are black men between 20 and 40 years old. But a large percentage of the people... The number one cause for death for kids is guns. Damn. In that city. Yeah, well, let's be frank. That's probably not the number one cause of death for glider kids, exactly. tiger kids, Patel kids, Prairie Patel kids, group kids of any other group. I mean, but this is the same way in every single city in the nation, basically. The no, what they're cause. missing here is the number one cause of death for kids, other than abortion, is 20 to 40 year old black males. True. Right. <laughs> They uh, they said nationwide the number one cause for child children's death is now gun violence. But I mean, if you took some kids out of the equation, that would not be the case. No, the gun violence is just a that's just a that's just BS. It's just it's just violence. Well, yeah. Well, and none of it Pulling has anything trigger. to do with none of it has anything to do with keeping people safer. Two year olds getting smoked in other races is so exceedingly rare for compared to some people that like. You know, it's almost a non-factor. Yeah, in public too, like by somebody they don't know. Now, two-year-olds in gladder neighborhoods do get smoked, but it's almost always someone they know. In well, yeah, and, and not at this rate. Like, like probably seventy-five percent of the two-year-olds that get killed are killed by someone they never even laid eyes on. Over 400 shooting incidents took place in 2022. 64 of those were homicides. And the people affected most by these shootings are black men between 20 and 40 years old. But a large percentage of the people pulling the trigger and being victims are kids. In 2020, fatal gunshot wounds surpassed motor vehicle crashes as the most common cause of sudden death in children. Now tonight, Cincinnati City Council members were joined by representatives from the police department, Children's Hospital, and Moms Demand Action, just to name a few. Residents like Pamela Adams believe the best approach is to get parents to step up and find more money for mental health services. Parents need to step up to the plate also. Take your arm around your child. Ask your child how your days go. Listen to your child. Quit sending them away. Tell my go somewhere. (laughs) <laughs> so she and this woman knows what she's talking about look how old she is she's from this community the parents she she's not saying this for no reason i i agree Sisters, that this is, come yeah, get your kids i agree that this is not the problem the main problem and this is not a solution but she's not saying this for nothing she's saying this because she sees this all the time Parents need to step up to the plate also. Take your arm around your child. Ask your child how your days go. 
listen to your child. Quit sending them away. Tell my go somewhere and sit down. I done had a rough day. Yes, you done had a rough day eight hours working or whichever happened. But you need to pay attention to your child. If you don't, that's what I said over there. The streets will get them because you're not there. Now, tonight's right. meeting was designed to be a forum for residents to voice their concerns, and no permanent plans were made. City leaders say even in neighborhoods with the highest number of shootings, it's not the whole neighborhood that's affected. In many cases, it's confined to particular streets, and they want to target those streets. How they do that, though, is still to be determined. Adam? Cassie, Maybe with thank a you. AC when the city did pass that would help. C-130. <laughs> out gun locks this evening the council recently <laughs> put in no gun locks <laughs> Christ. <laughs> I mean, come on man come on I'm man so fucking tired man <laughs> gun locks. this <laughs> group thinks that maybe they have the solution Cassie, thank you. When the city did pass out gun locks this evening, the council recently passed an ordinance that requires the safe storage of guns, especially around kids. If gun the ordinance, there's an ordinance we passed. You think Pookie and Ray Ray know about that ordinance? <laughs> what the fuck is he talking about? <laughs> say, cuh, say, cuh, this is no gun zone, cuh. Yeah, man, you got your gun lock. Oh, shit, I left my gun lock. Um, been the corner, man. Move back up in front of my house. I gotta go get my gun lock, man. We we'll go to this party, man. All those gun locks are gonna do is add a couple more seconds to the time that you're gonna need when you hear your fucking front door kick in, <laughs> and you gotta get prepared. Now you gotta get a lock off your shit. You gotta remember that fucking code, man. While it's sitting right. in the fucking charging towards you, shit. Could you imagine being in the moment? Finally, it's here. You, the moment you feared all your life, and you ready to get your gun, and you're like, "Oh shit! Is it my fucking birthday? Is it my wife's birthday? Is it my daughter's birthday? Is it my fucking old house address? What the fuck? Come who's, on, who's, but who's locking up the gun that they use for home security? Stupid. Maybe somebody what? who has seven children running around the house. Yeah, I don't know. Even, even then, that's stupid. Well, we know they ain't doing that anyway, so. Yeah, but responsible gun owners are doing that, Marcy. Responsible people are doing that. Not not for the gun that you're using for home security. That's dumb. Because when, when you need it, it needs to be ready. It's, yeah, that's, but that's, that could be the gun. Like, if you got kids, listen, kids find guns and they shoot each other. I can do stories on that all the time. I can start One of the most channel. common reasons that glider kids die from gunshots other than being like murdered in domestic murders. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cassie, thank you. When the city did pass out gun locks this evening, the council recently passed an ordinance that requires the safe storage of guns, especially around kids. If gun owners fail to do this, they can be charged with a first degree misdemeanor. Huh. And they're acting like this is a plague of gliders not locking their guns up when it's really 10 year olds shooting other 10 year olds. Yeah, man. I had access to guns when I was with my grand when I was with my grandparents. I didn't do shit like that because I because I wasn't a, I wasn't an evil little son of a bitch. You're just one person though, Monsi. Like this is extrapolated across everybody on the planet. No, but they keep but they they, they treat it they treat it as if a child a child can't understand the consequences of their actions. So you got so you got to hide so you got to hide everything from them. So that they so that they don't have the idea so the idea doesn't spread up in their head. But no, the idea just is it always there, but you don't they have to learn how to actually deal with it before you even do it, before you even get into, you know, trying to keep guns away from them. Is that the case? Well, the keep, first uh, thing they need to understand as a consequence of their action is you will get your butt beat if you get anywhere near this. <laughs> yeah, that city kind of wild. Yeah, man. Um they got a lot of shit going on. It goes goes down, man. New information about a shooting in Bond Hill. Officials at Woodward High School say the person who was shot was a student. They say the victim was shot off campus near the corner of Glen Meadows and Seymour around 3.30 this afternoon. After being shot, they walked to Woodward High School where the staff called 911 and put the school on lockdown as a precaution. The victim was rushed to the hospital in serious condition. It is not clear what led to the shooting. The school was on lockdown for about 20 minutes while police checked out the area. Wow. Another school lockdown, man. 
Uh, let's see. Let's see this one right here. A local business owner is desperate for help. Last month, he got an abrupt eviction notice from his landlord. He believes that's because the property will be sold and developed as part of FC Cincinnati's new entertainment district in the West End. As Morella Porter shows us now, he was joined by supporters as he took his case to city council today. A busy tire shop on Liberty Street forced out after six years. I put everything I got, every dime I got into that business. <laughs> Ahmad Hamoud's landlord gave him 30 days to move out or pay $16,000 in rent, eight Damn. times what he currently pays. But now, five days before his month-to-month -month agreement is set to end, he has nowhere to go and doesn't know how he'll move tons of heavy machinery and tires while still trying to run his business. They're killing my American dream. I want to be a successful man, and I did everything possible to let this business be. See, if this guy was black, he would have the racial element. Mm -hmm. He would have a bunch of, like, bow tie lawyers with him, and he could, like, use that to kind of like buy some time or get a better deal i just said this guy can't do that no he's fucked he's just fucked be successful and now they're just like putting me down and they're just taking everything i got away at the least he wants more time to relocate community activists even hamoud's customers showed up to city okay, hall today to sisters sisters y'all just every is there, is there a protest where y'all just say we sitting this one out? salute to these sisters though <laughs> coming out for for sanson man that's some good stuff yeah, man. Sit, but but seriously though sisters man i want to hear from my sisters man sit is there anything that y'all will just be like all right look man we like we got kids our kids are like literally like like the lady said earlier like your kids a fucking just you're not paying attention to your kids your kids aren't getting any love in the home and yet you see five time <laughs> go do <through> this shit <laughs> like, god damn sit sit one protest out just be like look man we tired man i got i got work in the morning i got something to do or like no like damn every fucking thing you're fucking on the front lines Golly, man. Shit. And now they're just like putting me down and they're just taking everything I got away. At the least, he wants more time to relocate. Community activists, even Hamoud's customers, showed up to City Hall today to back his plea for help. This is one gentleman, but he represents a whole community of people who are scared who feel threatened, who felt threatened when the stadium got there. And now their fears are playing out with black and brown businesses being displaced. While it's not clear if anything can be done to help. Oh, home. so it's a black and brown business. coalition. Yeah, it's, it's not a it's not a goddamn Sandman sand business, it's a black and brown business. Yeah, black. Food as it stands, Councilman Seth Walsh tells me he believes council needs to work on a way to help renters from being put in this position that there are a lot of small businesses out there that exist without leases. Um, and when you're existing without a lease, you lose a lot of legal protection. Walsh says the city needs to be proactive about helping small businesses learn the power of a lease. Because when we get to a stage like this, where there's no legal protections that are provided or appear to be provided, uh, we're all kind of stuck with our hands tied. Vice Mayor Jan Michelle Carney tells me she is working to find out is that a sister or a son, sis, gladder, son, gladder, sister? Okay. If the city might have a fund to support renters in this position. In downtown, Morella Porter, Local 12 News. Now, Ahmad Which says he tried to secure a lease from his landlord several times. He also says that he's always had the impression he'd get a six-month move-out notice. The property owner declined to share his side of the story for our report today. Right. Hey. Uh, poor Ahmad Mood. I can almost guarantee you that someone or himself has someone in his family or he has been robbed by a son man. Oh yeah, definitely. Without a doubt. 
Tonight, we are learning more about a 16-year-old boy shot and killed over the weekend in Westwood. Lamar Spikes was a high school sophomore, and his family says that his life was taken far too soon. Local 12's Jenna Cisneros joining us tonight in studio after talking with his loved ones. Jenna, good evening. Yeah, good evening, Kyle. Lamar Spikes, or Mar as his family calls him, will be sorely missed. They describe him as a track star with a heart of gold and a lot of ambition. They say he's a good kid, not violent. And as his killer is still out there, the family is desperate for justice. I'm shattered. He, anybody that knew Lamar knew that he was a lovely person. He's going to be really missed. Like, he's not a bad kid at all. Like, he didn't deserve it. What do y'all think about that? Uh, do, do these I believe see? him. You believe him? Okay. Yep. Yeah, I, I kind of, I, there's, a, there's an element. I'm on the fence. I'm not necessarily just discounting what you're saying. <laughs> I'm not no usually I would discount it, but I'm 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 kinda like leaning towards with you. Like I kinda I mm. might believe him a little bit. This on no levels. It's a pain no family ever wants to imagine. His smile was everything. Like he had this little dimple, this deep <laughs> dimple that would show every time he smiles and yeah. his laugh and the way he would just call your name, it was it's going to haunt me forever. He he didn't deserve this. The shooting happened Saturday night around 10 o'clock on Dartmouth Drive near Daytona Avenue. Lamar Spikes was shot and killed. He didn't live over there. According to um, sources, they're saying that he had a friend that lived over there, and that's what drew him over there. And times like this, I just wish we would have held him in our arms just a little bit longer. Four days I later, think. the family still has no answers as to who is responsible. For these people to take away my cousin with no remorse, I just want, I just want justice. And I, I hate to wish bad on people, but I just want justice in all the worst ways. I want these people to feel Ooh. what we feel. I want their families to feel what Ooh. we feel like. Wow, that's tough for a sister. Sisters use they they rarely ever say you know strong, unless it's a cop or white guy. Yeah. Huh? yeah, I believe them now because they never go strong unless it's a cop or a white guy. She likes to see them necklaced. Yeah, they didn't say he was the life of the party. They didn't say he made everybody laugh. Party. They didn't say yeah. all the bullshit. Yeah, and I I hate to wish bad on people, but. I just want justice in all the worst ways. I want these people to feel what we feel. I want their families to feel what we feel like. You Ooh. took you took away my everything. Members of his family Ooh. say they'll fight until they get closure. My message to the person that pulled that trigger is my nephew trusted you. My nephew has some type of respect and love for you. So for you to sit there and take my nephew life, you need to do the right thing and go ahead and is. take this and turn yeah. yourself in. Yeah, they know. Police have yet to say if they believe this to be a targeted shooting. They are still searching for a suspect. So if you have any information, call Crime Stoppers at 352-3040. Wow. These neighborhoods, these, these cities are dangerous. The Boys and Girls Club is recognizing a young girl for overcoming challenges that many of us haven't experienced in an entire lifetime. Four teens competed tonight for a $20,000 scholarship and the title of Youth of the Year. The winner is chosen based on their service to the Boys and Girls Club, character, written essays, and speaking ability. It's a culmination of months of work. Gamble Montessori High School sophomore Tatiana Cure... These are the four kids, man. Salute to these kids, man. Yeah. Salute to these kids, man. Who goes by Tater won tonight. Her father was murdered when she was only seven Jesus years old. Christ. Of course. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Yeah. <laughs> There's <laughs> nowhere the so sun good. doesn't touch. It was so, so good. <laughs> And then this kid probably should have won. They probably gave it to the sister just because, you know. What I'm he looked disappointed, like, what the fuck? <laughs> He's like, I knew I wasn't going there. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> like, my test scores were double buffer. I had more AP He looked classes. like, are you fucking serious? Like, like Urkel had been just really mad. Wow. Combination of months of work. Gamble Montessori High School sophomore Tatiana Cure, who goes by Tater, won tonight. Her father was murdered when she was only seven years old. And at that time, she turned to the Boys and Girls Club for support. 
I went there at a rough time. My father had passed, so I feel like it has what? helped. Speak? Wait a minute. Did they say something about speaking? Because... <laughs> Wait a fucking minute. My father minute. had passed. Yeah, that white kid definitely should have won. <laughs> Wait a minute, man. <laughs> They doing affirmative oh. action with fucking youth awards. God damn. damn. That was a sympathy award. <laughs> Look at that face. Yeah, that boy, he, he, he looks a little like, skeptical. He's like, what the fuck did she just say? <laughs> <laughs> How is this happening? This is preposterous. Yeah, <laughs> sis, he should have won that award either. I what mean, one wig. Was... Bamboozled. <laughs> she just wore you know a body on her head. Crazy, man. Damn it, I do feel bad for her. Though. I went there at a rough time. My father had passed. So I feel like it has helped be me become me because what? if I went there, I don't know where I would be. So and I had a lot of support from the staff and people. So I just feel like it has helped me in a whole lot of ways by just helping me become me and be myself and know myself as well. Congrats to Tater. She'll now compete in the regional competition. Tater. Good, good for Tater, man. Competition. If she wins that, she would earn a shot at the national competition in Atlanta out. later on this spring. No way in hell. What's up, Mayo? Hey, Mayo. Back. Hey, what's up, gentlemen? What's up, man? What's up? Hey, has the NFL offered that kid a job yet? <laughs> the oh, one that took out the teacher. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I think some teams are looking at him, man. Definitely looking at him, man. That's a running back if I ever saw one. Running back? Nah, that's a defensive lineman, man. He, that's he, Dwight he, Freeney. Yeah. That's exactly, Dwight Freeney. Man. That's, man. that's definitely Simeon Rice, man. Let me get um, let me get another city, man. Whew, Jesus Christ. Whew, Cincinnati, man. Yikes. Memphis, man. Oh, God. Memphis. Shit. <laughs> Memphis oh, will never hey, let you down. Did you cover Jaheim McMillan yet? Who's that? Yeah, we just did uh, the Jaheim kid that got earlier, that got I shot think. in Gulfport. Yeah, we just did that. Yeah, we and did unarmed that. with his hands up. Yeah, he, yeah, he, he wasn't doing <laughs> nothing, man. Um, <laughs> y'all did Philly already. We've been busy. We, we did, we did, we 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 started off with a story from Philly, but Philly, we did that last night. Um. Oh, Memphis, Memphis, Memphis. 